Hey everybody, welcome to the Song Revolution Podcast, brought to you by Nashville Christian Songwriters. Nashville Christian Songwriters exists to empower Christian songwriters worldwide. I'm John Chisholm, and this podcast exists to bring you valuable songwriting insights, inspiration, interviews, and just all around good fun with some of the greatest songwriters, producers, arrangers, artists, and creatives, and beyond. You can find out a whole lot more about us at NashvilleChristianSongwriters.com. Many aspiring songwriters wonder why their songs aren't having the impact that they desire. Is this you? After all, you felt the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to write down your thoughts and your feelings and your passionate worship for God. Maybe you felt driven to share a part of your story that's difficult, but you feel the need to help others through what you've been through. So you're risking this incredible vulnerability to put it all in a song, but nobody seems to care. So what now? The truth is that there are thousands of Christian writers wanting to write about their passion for God and share their stories just like you. So how do you manage to stand out above the noise and have anybody pay attention? Well, here's another truth. The effectiveness and impact of your song is directly related, correlated with the quality of your original idea, no matter what the subject matter. Hey everybody, John Chisholm here for the Song Revolution podcast. So glad that you're taking a few minutes out of your day to, to invest in yourself and in your calling to express your love and passion for Jesus, as well as those stories that have bubbled up out of your journey, those valleys and the mountaintops that you've encountered and feel the burning desire to share the victories and the lessons that you've learned to help others in their journeys. I originally started recording this episode thinking of it as just one episode, but the longer it got, the more I realized that I, I should break this up into shorter, more digestible episodes so that you can really get this deep into your heart, your brain, your mind, and start using it to make your songs better starting today. So, looks like this is going to be part one of a four-part series that I'm calling Making Your Mark in Music by Tapping into Your Most Powerful Ideas. There's just so much that we can say and so many directions to go, but maybe this will be the catalyst for greater songwriting for you from now on. The scope of these four episodes will cover increasing the quality of your song ideas, including part one today, why increasing the quality of your ideas is the only way you're going to be heard and I'm going to give you some practical ways to do that. I'm not just I'm not just going to talk about it. I'm going to give you some ways that you can actually go about doing that. And then part two, something that I deal with my songwriting clients on all the time is writing from the essence of ideas and how to craft from those ideas, from the essence of those ideas, compelling North Star hooks. We're going to talk about that as well. Part three, I want to spend some time with you on how to develop originality. That's one of the biggest drawbacks to aspiring songwriters is that they tend to uh, write the same themes and things and words and phrases over and over and over, and they're not tapping into the originality factor that will help put them over the top and actually get some attention from people, whether they're in your congregation or record company people, whoever it is, whoever's, whoever's attention you're trying to get, if you're not if you're not working with originality, nobody's going to pay attention to you. And though that's part three, part four is going to be letting your North Star hook guide you through the songwriting process. So before we get into today's content, I just want to take a minute to acknowledge Nashville Christian Songwriters for sponsoring this podcast and working to empower Christian songwriters worldwide through a lot of different things, but especially with the new NCS membership. And why should you even care about that? I'm not going to do a long commercial, but I really think you should know about this. I mean, let's just put it this way. There aren't a lot of people in this space offering the kind of community and high quality resources to keep you moving forward powerfully in your calling to write great songs. I mean, let's face it. Anybody can put some words to a melody, have it out on YouTube in about an hour and call it a song. But that's not what's going to put you over the top. It certainly won't capture the attention of people in your church or publishers in Nashville. I mean, you've got to take this thing to the next level, and that's where NCS membership comes in. It's a fantastic new community of dedicated Christian songwriters devoted to learning how to impact the world with their songs and see the kingdom come one great song at a time. I believe that you have a part to play, and NCS membership helps 
you get there. If you stay tuned to the end of the podcast or fast forward to the end of it if you want to now, I've got some special things to offer you there that I think you're going to be very interested in. We're still offering for a limited time NCS membership at the introductory price of 149 bucks for your first year. So go to NashvilleChristianSongwriters.com and check that out. You know, I'm going to ask you one more question. Why should you join NCS membership? Because it's going to equip, empower, encourage, and inspire you to greater songwriting at an amazing price. So on to today's episode. I talk a lot on the show about inspirational topics like mindset, working through fears, and the mental blocks that keep you from taking giant strides in your songwriting. You know, songwriting is a mental game. This is art. We're creating art here. We're not just writing facts. We're not just, you know, taking Bible verses, although I love Bible songs, but we're not just taking things and stating them again and again and again. That's one of the downfalls also. That that goes in our originality uh, podcast episode. But songwriting is art. Songwriting is taking something out of the ethereal and bringing it into the practical in ways that many, many people can embrace it and it would transform their lives. A lot of people think the word commercial is a bad word. It's not a bad word. All it means is that the greatest number of people can embrace your song. It doesn't mean it's dumbed down either. There can be great, wonderful truths in a commercial song. So let's lose that bad attitude about commerciality. But songwriting is a mindset. It's a mental thing, a mental game. And my associate uh, coach, Rob Corona, he often says that songwriting is a long game. And what that means is that you can't just write a handful of songs and think that you've arrived. I have people contact me and say, well, I've written five songs and I want to get them to a publisher. And it's like, you know, it really doesn't work that way, guys. I mean, the people that are pro writers, they're writing thousands of songs every year, hundreds and hundreds. They're they're not writing five songs and thinking that they're suddenly ready to go to publishing. It just doesn't really work that way. You just can't write a handful and think that you've arrived. You might love your songs and think they're wonderful, but the rest of the world doesn't even know you exist. Songwriters today are up against enormous odds of being heard, and that's always the number one question that writers have, including you. So having a bulletproof mindset is the only way that you'll stick it out to success in any significant way. You have to decide that this calling is worth fighting for and that you do anything it takes to walk it out. That's mindset. And I talk a lot about that on the show because I know that you can get a ton of teaching in a lot of different places about the techniques of songwriting. You can go to YouTube today and you can get 100 hours of teaching on songwriting, but that's not really all that you need. You need this bulletproof mindset and a a deep sense of your calling to fulfill this thing. So since I do talk a lot about mindset and the philosophical side of songwriting here, I thought I'd take this episode in the next uh, four, however many am I doing, three or four, I thought I'd take uh, this little mini uh, podcast series to drop some specific how-to content on you guys. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think the mindset piece and the philosophy of songwriting is every bit as practical and vital to your success, but maybe you'd welcome just a little break from it on the show to hear how you can increase the quality of your songs and have a real shot at being heard by increasing the power of your song ideas. And even before you write the songs, I think that's so important. So back to the real issue at hand, the number one thing, the elephant in the room, the reason that we're in successful Christian songwriters and listen to this podcast and join NCS membership and do all the things that we do and join all the Facebook groups, all those things that you're part of, and that is being heard. That's what we want. I totally believe that God created you to be heard. That's why he's called you to be a songwriter. He wants you to be heard in whatever context that is. And we'll talk more about that as we go along. But there's a huge reason that professional songwriters get heard and get the cuts. Now, don't get offended at this. Don't get mad at me. I love you, but I'm going to tell you the truth. The reason that the professionals get the results is because they have better ideas than you and they've cultivated the skills to capture them. 
Now, that may seem a little harsh, and I don't mean to be a shock jock with this thing, but I'm telling you, this is the reason that they are where they are. This is the reason that they get songs on everybody's records is because they've cultivated their ability to capture great ideas. They've learned to recognize them, and I'm going to help you with that in just a moment. You know, pro songwriters didn't just get lucky breaks or get in front of the right people to be heard before they had the best ideas and then the skill to craft them into hit songs. You know, a lot of times I have people, uh, you know, say, you know, why, why, we're just following the Holy Spirit. Why don't we just write our songs for Jesus and call them good? We, if that's what you want, that's fine. But a lot of people that listen to me, they really want to increase the quality of their songs because they want broader exposure to their songs. And so all I'm doing is trying to help you do that. The worst thing that you could do is get an audience with a publisher before you're ready. That's just the great myth in Christian songwriting and really all songwriting, all uh, music business stuff that many believe. If they could just be heard by the right people, suddenly the clouds would part, rays of sunlight would be shining down on them, and they would ascend into this great success in publishing and, and music business. And it just really does not happen like that. The worst thing that could happen to you, my friends, is to get in front of a top shelf publisher before you are ready. The truth is that your ideas, your hooks, lyrics, and melodies have to be functioning at an extremely high level for you to begin to compete. And most people just don't invest in themselves. They don't invest in their skill set, their mindset, the time, their finances, and their faith into what it takes to truly get there. Professional songwriters have done that. I could derail into mindset right here because it's my favorite thing, but I won't. I talk to songwriters every day who even cry on the phone with me about their passion to do this, yet they don't even take the smallest steps toward developing themselves in their calling. They just expect it to magically appear because they've written four or five songs or to manifest on them without a tremendous amount of effort to get there. And I have a really important question to ask you. Is that you? Is that you? Are you just hoping? You know, hope is not a great strategy. Faith, you know, faith is the substance of things hoped for, but then we've got to get up and put those works with our faith. We can't just sit around and hope. Hope's not a great strategy. It's it's vital. You've got to have hope, but you got to get up off your blessed assurance and go do this work. So what are you doing to make sure that you're growing every day in your craft? Are you listening to thousands of songs? And I'm really serious about that. Are you listening to thousands of songs? Are you writing every day and reading and thinking and praying and working to get better each day, each week, each month? I'm just convinced you just can't be successful at this thing if you're not renewing yourself day by day by day. And not having enough time is one of the poorest excuses in the world. If you really want something, you make time. If you really, I'm telling you, if you really want this, you will make time. You might be caught up in the endless, I've got a passion, but no action loop that just really is, that's the number one block to your success. You know, the number one reason that people aren't published is because they don't write. That's the number one reason that that wannabe book authors never get published. They never find an agent. They never get a book deal is because they never write their books. They want to. They have a passion for it, but they really don't do anything about it. Okay, see, I just derailed into mindset again because uh, maybe it's because I need it so much. I'm not sure. But, you know, my passion is to wake people up to the truth that there's no real shortage of opportunity. No publisher, no artist, no record company in Nashville will ever turn down a phenomenal song. There's really no shortage. That's the mindset that we have is that it's somebody else's fault. We don't have an open door. We don't have a leg up. We don't know people in the industry. Well, guess what? You know me. You're listening to me. You're looking at me. I'm I'm in the industry. I can meet. I, I have doors. I got people, but I don't have the phenomenal songs. I got to get the phenomenal songs if I'm going to walk in these doors. So that is the 
the rub. Therein lies the rub that you probably think that your songs already are phenomenal and you wonder why nobody cares about them. And it's easy to blame circumstances and even God for not giving you the open doors for people to finally see that your songs are amazing and you're ready for prime time. You know, it's kind of like the American Idol syndrome where those ridiculous people would get on there. They used it for comic relief, but they were not self-aware enough to really know where they stood in terms of quality and competition. And if you're going to compete, you've got to be competitive. You've got to figure this thing out. So I've had clients come into our coaching thinking that I was going to fawn all over them and their songs, of course, until the stark light of reality hit them and they finally began to see how far away they really were to anything that could compete with a million other songs and songwriters hustling every day to make this thing happen. If you're not, if, if you're not hustling every day in some small way at least, you know, it just tells me you're not as serious about it as you might want to portray yourself as being. If you're serious about success, you have to wake up every day and say to yourself, I'm late for work, baby. Time to get up and go after it. Don't wait for anybody else to inspire you. I'm trying to inspire you, believe me, with all the stuff that we're putting out, this podcast especially, but all the other things. But you've got to inspire yourself. You got to get up. You got to get up and say, I'm late for work. I'm late. I got to get on. I got to get on this. I got to do some listening. I got to do some reading. I got to inspire myself. You know, the scriptures say that David encouraged himself. You got don't wait on anybody else. You got to encourage yourself. All right. I'm off on mindset. Listen, I'm just addicted to that stuff. So let's take a turn here on a very basic practical level. What does it take to break through? Let's say the planets lined up. You finally prayed the exact words that would make God answer your prayers. And I don't believe in making God do anything, but you were sitting, uh, you know, suddenly your prayers are answered. You're sitting in a plush publishing office on Music Row, ready to play three of your absolute best songs. What would make a publisher, producer, or artist actually care? Well, what I want to focus on first is the quality of your song idea. This is the one thing that will make your song stand out from a million others when you have an idea that is so powerful, so unique, so memorable, so compelling, so emotional, so sticky that you have executives literally jumping out of their chairs to make sure they get the chance to work with you. Okay? I mean, that's what you want, right? Let's be honest. It's the elephant in the room. Let's get real. That's what we all want. We write and we want to be heard. Well, just one or two more philosophical thoughts, and then I promise we're moving on, that you've got to pay attention to if you're ever going to get that break and begin to see your songs grab people by the ears and make them pay attention is, this is it, okay? Make notes if you can. First, your song can never rise. It will never rise above the level or quality of your idea. That's the only thing that's going to make people jump to work with you. It's just a scientific impossibility, an artistic impossibility that you're going to have a mediocre idea and turn it into a hit song. It just doesn't work. You know, hits are hits because the idea is so strong, so powerful, so far and away better than anything else that it demands to be heard. And that's the first thing. Your songs, the quality of your song will never arise above the quality of your idea. And then second, if you want better songs, you must be spending three to four to 12 times the amount of time on finding and developing your ideas before you write the song. A lot of times, most of the time, maybe 99% of the time, aspiring songwriters make this mistake. They sit down to write and they don't have an idea. They've not spent any time developing an idea. Maybe they've set aside an hour and a half or two hours on a Saturday morning, but they sit down and they're writing on empty. They don't have any ideas. They don't have anything that's coming up out of them that is demanding attention, demanding to be written. You know, pro songwriters 
are students of language and spend vast amounts of time and energy identifying, collecting, and developing song ideas, hooks, titles, phrases. They've got scraps of napkins from Chili's uh, or from Pizza Hut or wherever they go, and they keep them or they speak them into their phone. They do something to try to capture those things. It's kind of like they have radar attached to the tops of their heads, and they're always scoping the atmosphere for those tidbits of words and syllables and sounds that become that can become great songs. They see lines and phrases in books. They pick up snippets of dialogue from movies. They pick up ideas from conversations with their spouses and friends and kids at the ballpark. I don't know how many times in a conversation I've said, you know, that's a great hook. And then I'll, if, if I don't write it down right then or put it in my phone, it's lost. But how many of those have you missed recently? Uh, pro songwriters pay attention to television commercials and radio ads and are always listening for what could connect with someone through a song. In other words, they're resourceful. They've got the radar, the antenna up. And that's just one of the greatest qualities that you can have in all of life is to be resourceful, but there's nothing that can replace being resourceful as a songwriter and finding and developing better ideas. All right, here's some more practical stuff, you guys. Let's break this down and turn it into practical ways that you can dramatically increase the quality of your ideas and therefore dramatically increase the quality of your songs and therefore actually stand out and grab attention. Okay, did you catch that? If you were watching me and I had a, a blackboard, I would write better ideas equals better hooks equals better songs equals being heard or being worth hearing, okay? So let's go about it this way and ask ourselves, if, if the success of my song depends on the quality of my idea, how can I make my song ideas better? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because when we ask ourselves better questions in life, we get better answers and the quality of our whole lives increases. When we learn to ask ourselves better questions, life gets better. That's, that's across the board. That's in your marriage, your parenting, your finances, uh, your spiritual life, your physical life. If you want to lose some weight, ask yourself better questions questions, all right? If you want to make more money, ask yourself better questions. If you want to be a better spouse, ask yourself better questions. Let's get back to songs. I jumped on mindset. There I was again. All right, so the first thing that you must do is educate yourself on why hit songs are hit songs. You got to do that. That's the first thing you've got to do. Now, some of you may check out on me because I'm going to talk about Megan Trainer and the song All About That Bass. Uh, so, you know, forgive me. It's not a Christian song. It's about a body part. I know, but it's a great example of what I'm going to talk about here. And you know, just think about, it was a breakthrough hit a couple years ago, I think three years ago, Me Megan Trainer, all about that bass. I know, I know, you know, it, it's not Christian, but it has universal appeal for a couple of reasons. A lot of young girls in the world have been brainwashed by media that if they're not tiny, if they're not the skinny girls, then they're unlovable and that's just a universal thing, right? Anorexia, horrible problem, all of that kind of stuff. So Megan went anti-skinny. She's not a skinny girl herself, but you know she tapped into that body image issue that is endemic to our culture for all the wrong reasons. You know, so th there's there was immediately a level of universality because not everybody is skinny like the media portrays. So the point is that she and her co-writer, uh, producer Kevin Kadish, were just knocking around a title that he already had. He already had the title, All Bass, No Treble. And they combined it with a phrase that Megan Trainer would say constantly, I'm all about that. And so that's how All About the Bass, All About That Bass, happened. Let me tell you a little more of the story. This was pre record deal for her, and she actually got her label deal as a singer when she performed an impromptu version of that of that new song at a party uh, for some executive people uh, with nothing but her ukulele. Now, in another podcast, uh, John Mays is our most downloaded podcast here on the Song Revolution podcast. He's got like 1,600 downloads. Uh, I think it's like episode number three or four or five, I forget. 
but it's called How to Make It in the Music Industry, ironically. And so uh, in that episode, he talked about the intersection of preparation and opportunity. And in this instance, which is what we should all be preparing, working, doing all that we can do for when that moment, that intersection of opportunity and preparation meet, we're ready, okay? Um, Paul told Timothy to study to show himself approved, and sometimes we just don't even want to do that. Okay, back to Megan Trainer and All About the Bass. I've got some great things to say about it. You know, they'd been pitching the song for other artists, but no one had a vision for it until Megan performed it at that party, uh, landing her a record deal that caused her to become the breakout artist and songwriter of 2014 in the pop world. But she actually discovered her artistry through that experience and launched an entire career from that moment. And, you know, whether you like her or not, you know, that's not even the point. The subject matter isn't even the point. So don't get offended at me about that. I'm, I'm bringing you a lesson about songs and songwriting and hooks. Okay, so what she did is she stood out from the crowd with a very sticky, memorable, compelling, and emotional hook for a lot of people. That's an emotional song for a lot of people, whether you like it or not. It doesn't matter. It's an emotional song for a lot of people. And we can learn from that example, right? I mean, the, don't get hung up because it's a secular song. It's just a song, right? So, But the principles are all the same. And let me break down a couple more practical principles that she and Kadish used in that, okay? If you have a, a pencil or pen handy, or you want to just type this in your phone, type out the words all about that base, okay? I mean, and then let's look at this. Let's look at this phrase, okay? Look at all the A's, okay? A in all, A in about, A in that, and A in base. There's an A in every single word in that hook, that title, okay? That's called alliteration. And there's more alliteration than just the A's. There's alliteration in the B's, all about that base, okay? So what happens with your tongue, what happens with the language is very, very important here. That just that phrase is so sticky and so you know, hooky, it, it, and forget the rest of the song and the great job they did of, of crafting that. But then there's a third alliterative in that phrase, and that's the T's all about that base. Okay, so you've got three T's going on. So how many A's do we have? Uh, one, two, three, four A's. We have two B's, and we have three T's. So I would say the A's have it, right? But that is incredible. And so that is immediately hooky. And so when you're thinking about your uh, your song ideas, look for alliteration, okay? Think about a song like In Christ Alone. Let's bring it back over to the gospel side here for a minute. In Christ Alone. So the ends have it in that, In Christ Alone. But it's, it's, it's just enough there. What about uh, Matt Marr and those guys, Lord, I Need you, right? So the D's. And then I wrote a song with my great friend Dwight Lyles years ago that was a Southern gospel hit, and it was called Can He, Could He, Would He? Can he, could he, would he? Yes, he can, he could, he would, and he did. Just alliteration all over the place, right? You've got the C's, can he, could he? You've got the H's, can he, could he, would he? And you've got the inner rhyme of the could and the would. Can he, could he, would he? So it's it just even the title is extremely hooky. So once you're aware that alliteration is a key, you'll start seeing it everywhere. You'll see it on billboards. You'll see it in uh, television ads. You'll see it in pop and country songs, uh, the titles like uh, Chris Stapleton's Tennessee Whiskey, right? So the S's, Tennessee Whiskey, or Lady Annabellum's You Look Good. And even though those they don't rhyme, there are O's, there is a near rhyme, you look good, looking good, but Y-O-U-L-O-O-K-G-O-O-D. So there's a lot of alliteration. And alliteration can be assonance or consonance, okay? That can be on the vowel sound or it can be on the, um, the vowel or the, what is it, consonant? Yeah, the vowel or the consonant, right? So be looking at those things in your songwriting and in your hooks, and immediately the quality is going to go up because you're going to be giving people something to hold 
onto. All right. So that almost wraps it up. But I do want to just kind of share with you wrapping up the takeaways from this episode. So if you weren't taking notes, but you want to take a couple of notes here, I think if you don't walk away with anything from this podcast today, walk away with this, that better ideas equal better hooks, equal better songs, equals being heard. Okay, you've got to educate. This that's the first thing. Second thing, you've got to educate yourself on why hit songs are hit songs, and be open to using the principles and formulas that pro songwriters use. Don't sit back. Don't sit back and throw rocks at professional songwriters and wishing that you could be one, but you're not willing to get up and do something. Don't throw rocks at these people. They've spent their lives. They've spent their money. They've spent their time figuring out how to do this. And then third, to be successful, which means to be heard, right? Uh, You've got to stand out from the crowd with a sticky, memorable, compelling, emotional hook. All right, you've just got to do that. And it's it's it sounds simple. It's not as easy as it sounds. It's simple, but it's not always easy to do. That's why you've got to just hang in here and keep doing this. And then finally, alliteration is a great way to immediately increase the quality, the stickiness of your title or your hook. No matter what genre, no matter what uh, style, it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if you're writing a worship song, you know, Um how great is our God? There's alliteration right there. So you'll start seeing it everywhere you look. Well, I hope that that's been very helpful for you today here on the Song Revolution podcast. And that was just part one. So we've got three more parts. We're going to be doing every other week because we release interviews every other week. It gives me a little time to get them done. And then I bring teaching every other week. I'm going to ask you if this has been a blessing to you, share it out. Share it out on your social media for us. Do us a favor. Uh, You know, do a little giving here. I'm not asking for any money, but if you could just, uh, if you, you just share this out, if you find it helpful, leave us a review over on iTunes. You can find the Song Revolution podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, and on our site, NashvilleChristianSongwriters.com. You can also find out everything that you want to know about NCS membership over there at NashvilleChristianSongwriters.com. We're offering fresh monthly content just like this. We're bringing great content, uh, uh, videos. I've got five videos we've already filmed that I'm getting edited. Uh, We're doing uh, lengthy articles that aren't available in anywhere else, discounts on everything that we do, um, a couple of free song uh, critiques, uh, and then you can buy some, you know, at a discounted rate. But I mean, this it's a great way to get into community and to invest in yourself. And for a limited time, we're going to leave it up for a little bit longer. We're still offering the introductory price of 149 bucks. We're giving away thousands of dollars of content uh, for our NCS members. And so for 149 bucks, you could give up Starbucks for one month and become an NCS member for a whole year. So I hope that you'll join me over at NashvilleChristianSongwriters.com and we'll be looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Song Revolution podcast. This is John Chisholm and I'm inviting you to join the Song Revolution. Thanks for being here today for the Song Revolution podcast from Nashville Christian Songwriters. We exist to empower you and to bring you some of the greatest inspiration, insights, and important people from the Christian music world to help you write your best and to be heard as the songwriter that you were born to be. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us over on Twitter and Instagram, and connect with us through our Facebook group called Successful Christian Songwriters. Until next time, I'm John Chisholm calling you to a song revolution.